Hey guys, welcome to part 4 of my optimization series for Unity 5 and today we're going to be looking at import settings or importing models from your native 3D program into Unity, looking at custom collisions and looking at all the settings that we need to do inside of Unity when we're going to bring in a new model. And it's just some key areas to focus on. So this is going to be my example today. So here's a sort of simple basketball. And I will show you what the things that I normally do. And it's not really dependent for 3ds Max, so which I'm using here. You can use any 3D program, and it all basically is sort of equal to the same thing. So what I usually do is, if say I've got my object, I would select it, I would file, export, and I would export the model. I'll choose where to export the model, so I'm going to export it to um, this folder. And I will export as a .fbx and you could export any other native uh, 3D pr program, you could even export as a 3ds Max file, but it's best if you use it FBX or even .object. I'll save it out as basketball and press save and it will um, we'll bring up some options and we don't really need to focus on any of these options. I don't want to embed media because I'll bring my texture in separately because we'll create the material separately. So when we've done this, I'll just press OK and we'll go inside of Unity and what I want to do when I want to go inside Unity I'll usually create a new folder I'll create the folder called Basketball I will import a new asset by right clicking on the folder and saying import new asset I will go to whether wherever I exported my object I will choose the basketball you can see in my uh, folder I will have a materials folder created and the actual object itself so you can see you can't really see anything going on and the material is the basketball UV diffuse so what I want to do from there is for the material or the texture that I've got for this this is a PSD for now what I would like to do is save it out I'll choose to save this in my optimization folder and what I'll do is I'll save this out as a target and I'll save it out as basketball UV diffuse whatever it was um, matched in the PSD it doesn't really matter we can save it as a 24 bit um, image I'll go back into unity again and then in the basketball what I'll do is I'll import a new asset and I'll choose the basketball UV diffuse and you can still see on the basketball it has no material on my material I can now drag my UV diffuse to the albedo diffuse or the color map slot and when I add it in you will see that it will be applied to my object and then when you click on your actual basketball object you will see that it's applied with however it is and we'll go into sort of tweaking the shader in another part of the series now from here you will get import settings which you will have the scale factor so you can scale it up or down if it's um, too small too large what we can do is we can bring it in for now and I'll just drop it there and you'll be able to see it in the scene and if we click back on the basketball you can click that you don't really want to do mesh compression um, these things will be uh, ticked by default and it will do a lot of things for you to sort of optimize for the game engine generate colliders is not really that beneficial because if I did that it would make a mesh collider for this entire object so if I look at this you can see that the polygons it's made out of it's fairly high poly so it would make a collision for every single one of those polygons and that wouldn't be very optimized at all so we don't want to actually do that we'll make our own custom collision and I'll show you a couple of ways of doing that if you're going to be doing light maps or you want to be this to never move and set to static if you want to do the baking you're going to have to say you want to generate light mapping UVs you can go into the advanced settings if you feel confident with doing that but if you do is hit apply once you do that you can leave um, the normals and the tangents the same you can choose to import materials or not so if I choose to untick that it wouldn't have created this or it won't have this material anymore and what I'll do is on the rig what we do before we can switch we'll just press apply because we've generated those light maps we've got no animation type and we've got no animation animations it would import animations if that was already in there for us now if I zoom in all the way to my uh, basketball here 
and I click on my texture, you can see that it's 1024 by 1024 map. Now the max size currently is 2048, and we want to optimize that texture when we import every single asset. So if I take it down to 1024, you won't really have seen a resolution drop. We could even take that down to 512, and maybe you didn't even see a drop again. But again, it's like I mentioned in my previous video, it'll be minimizing the size, it'll be compressing the size. You can choose a different compression if you don't like the way it's um, compressing your actual texture, if it's losing too much quality. You can, if you brought in a normal map, you will need to set the different type. But for this, the texture type is the what it is normally. And one thing that you can do to um, optimize something particularly is if you go on the mesh renderer, you can say whether or not you want it to cast or receive shadows. So if you think this is an object that will not be really important or it will not be near a light, take off that it casts shadows because the more shadows that we cast, the more shadows that we receive, the more um, draw calls that we're going to seek within the game. So it's really dependent on what type of asset you're making and whether on whether or not you want shadows on. I did say that we might want to actually create a custom collider for this. Now there is a couple of ways we could do this. We could, as I said, when we went on the import settings for the basketball, we could say generate colliders, but we don't really want to do that. We could click on the basketball now, go component, physics, and we could use spherical collider. And you'll see that it will put a spherical collider all around our object. But you see that you can see that's how it's made up with those green bounding lines. And you can see that that's quite an optimized collision because there's not many um, things taking it up. If we remove that, we could even add something which is even more optimized than a sphere collider. We could have a box collider on there if it's just going to sit there and you're just going to run into it. But it's really dependent on the type of object and the type of thing you're doing. So say we wanted this ball to actually roll around, we'd need the spherical collider physics and sphere collider so it would roll because this is contoured to the actual object itself. And we can edit that however you need it to be. And remember, if your object needs to be static, you can tick that static at the top. One thing that I normally like to do is you can create a prefab out of this. So say I have already put a sphere collider on. I've checked whether I need to do the um, receive or um, re cast shadows. I can create a new prefab and prefab that up so I could use it as many times as I need rather than having to bring out this every time and the actual imported model won't have the collider so it won't be the finished article that we're after so what you can do easily there is right click create prefab um, rename your prefab to basketball underscore prefab something like that and what you could do is you can drag your game object of prefab uh, your game object into the prefab slot there and you will see that it will be now made up of that and anytime we actually edit say this original object you can see there's a prefab up there so say we uh, for instance remove the um, sphere collider press apply it will now update our prefab according to however we created it originally so for instance if we now put physics and box collider on it hit apply our actual prefab will be changed so we can pull that out as many times as we need it to with custom settings. Now one last thing I was going to go into mentioning is if you are back into your 3D program and you wanted to make yourself a custom collision, say your object's quite complicated and it's made up of a lot of different items and you can't exactly put one particular collision on it you could make yourself an, a custom collision. So say I've got the sphere object in 3ds Max here, and I just pull it over my sphere. This is an example. And I will just show you the wireframe, because we don't want this many polygons in a collider. So I could take this down, take this down, take this down to a point where I feel that that's acceptable. So that could be acceptable there for our collision. 
we could rename this to basketball collision in the same way we did before export this out bring it into unity in the same way you could import it into this folder you could delete the materials from the object you could remove the mesh renderer from that and just use it as a custom collision and what you would need to do then is put physics component physics and you would need to put a mesh collider onto this onto this object so I'll show you quickly I'll run through export and I will spot this as basketball collider I don't want it to bring anything with me I'll just press OK I'll go back into unity what I'll do is on the basketball I will import a new asset I will choose the basketball collider what I'll do is I will untick import materials because I don't want that and you can see that when I pull this out into my scene you'll see it there so on my object here if I go component physics and mesh collider and we make it convex so we can see that it's um, going around the mesh accordingly to how we want it then what I can do from there is remove the um, mesh renderer component and you will have yourself your own custom collision as an example for a custom collision mesh that you might want to use for a more complicated object now like I said it doesn't really matter for this basketball specifically because it's already um, if you're using the sphere collider pretty well optimized as it is so they were just some quick tips that when you import objects you want to check the import settings make sure it's scaled correctly you can generate UVs only generate colliders if it's very very simple geometry you can um, look at the material and we'll go into this further in the future look at your texture and compress it comp um, compress the max size down we can choose the object make sure that it's got a collision mesh on it if you think it needs it because not all objects do you can choose to receive or cast shadows you can set it to static if you need to create a prefab for the object if you want to be able to use it multiple times and then you can create a custom collision if you need it to be done. So hopefully this ironed a lot of things out and helped you import a lot of things into Unity 5. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.